Hi guys, it's me, Finza, and I'm back here on the Adobe channel with the second part of my Premiere Pro Editing Basics series. If you haven't checked out part one, then make sure to go and watch that video to find out how to import footage and cut it up. In this video, we're gonna walk you through adding zooms, transitions, and subtitles to your videos, and then how to export your videos for YouTube. Let's begin. Now we're gonna learn about zooming and the different ways that you can achieve going from here to here in one clean motion. But first, we should learn about a different kind of zoom, that zoom being timeline navigation. Getting around Premiere Pro is by far the most important thing to master before anything else. The first two shortcuts you need to glue your fingers to are the plus and minus keys. This will zoom in and out of the sequence timeline. And if you click on your source monitor, you can use the same keys to zoom in and out of that sequence there. If you press the backwards slash key on your keyboard, then Premiere will zoom to where your playhead is. And if you press it again, it will zoom out to show the whole timeline, both of which can be really useful when you need to quickly get to the playhead without smashing the plus key a million times or want to catch a glimpse of that juicy looking timeline. Now to zoom into your footage. It's pretty easy. Click on that clip you want to zoom in on and head up to this tab here, Effect Controls. When you click it, you'll see a big load of options and variables. To zoom in, you drag the slider here under Scale and take your clip from 100 to whatever you want. And zooms are perfect for cropping into your footage and really showing things close up. Transitions can really define the feel of a video, whether that's super clean with crossfading or really energetic with the Mobius zoom. Premiere Pro includes dozens of transitions and other video and audio effects in its effects panels, all of which are built in from the moment you get the software. So let's have a look at what we can do here. To show the effects panel, if you can't see it already, head up to Window up here and then click Effects in the drop down options. If it wasn't showing before, then it will be now. You can dock it into an easy place simply by dragging it from the top bar here and then releasing it as Premiere lights up this blue area here. Now your effects panel is in a very easy location for you to conveniently access. Now you've got that set up, head up to the effects panel and click on the video transitions tab. Here we will select a random transition and drag and drop it onto the end of our clip here. You can also drag and drop transitions onto the space where two clips meet. It really is as simple as that. Something that is even more convenient is right clicking on the end of your clip and applying the default transition, which in our case will be the cross fade. You can change the duration of this transition by dragging these handles right here. When you double click on the transition you've put into your clip, you'll be able to see the parameters that let you configure exactly how you want your transition to look. With the more complex transitions, this can be really useful. Premiere also includes a whole load of audio transitions and effects. And once again, the easiest way to apply a quick edit to your audio, for example, a smooth fade out, would be to right click on the end of this clip here and apply the default transition. All the same controls apply, and you can change the duration by simply pulling on these handles. If you have a favorite transition that you know you're gonna be using a lot, then you can change the default transition. This means that you can just right click and apply the default transition, but it will be your chosen one. Just right click on the transition that you like and select the option set selected as default transition. So we wanna add some text to your project. Subtitles to either enhance the viewer experience or for accessibility. Either way, adding subtitles and or creating captions is a good thing to know how to do. First off, we wanna open up the captions and graphics workspace. To do this, we click on this icon up here, which will show us all of the editing workspaces we can use. Then head to captions and graphics workspace. Once here, you can add captions in multiple ways, but here's just one method that uses automated transcription. First, you'll see this text panel which will have the option to create a transcript from all of the speech in your sequence. Before you create captions, head to transcript and then hit transcribe, which will show you what Premiere thinks you are saying in the video. Let's be real. Everybody wants financial freedom. You can easily edit this if any of the words are wrong by just double clicking and typing out your intended speech. You'll also see Premiere has labeled speakers depending on who is talking. You can rename these speakers here by clicking this button and changing the names to whoever is speaking in the video. When you're ready, you head back to captions and click create captions from transcript button. Once you've done this, you'll have a few options pop up, namely caption presets and caption preferences. We wanna play around with the caption preferences here to change how our captions look. I personally like to have shorter captions and not ones that are two lines long and stay on the screen for 10 seconds at a time. Luckily, all of these settings can be changed here. For example, how many lines do we want? For me, I prefer single. 
and how many characters maximum do we want before moving on to the next caption? Let's say 22. Not too many and not too few. Okay, now that we're happy with that, let's transcribe this thing. Once transcribed, you will find all of the individual captions as clips along the top in their own segregated track. You will find all of the custom text options here in the right, where you can play with the font, the size and the spacing. All of the classic text customization options you'd expect. To apply it to all of the captions, just highlight the whole top track like so and make those adjustments on the right side. Now I just want to take a second to talk about why captions are super important because you might be thinking, well, what's the point in doing this? First of all, subtitles are really important for accessibility as they allow people who are deaf or hard of hearing to enjoy your content. Captions can also really enhance the storytelling of a video by making sure that information is presented clearly. And on social media like TikTok and Instagram, having captions makes sure that people scrolling along without audio are able to engage with the video. It's worth playing around with the caption settings to see what works best on each platform, which as you now know, it's really easy to do. Let's be real. Everybody wants financial freedom. Adobe has introduced a cool new tool called text-based editing. Essentially, Premiere Pro creates a transcript of your video using AI. Thanks to something called Adobe Sensei, the transcript displays multiple speakers and makes everything really clear. For anyone who doesn't want to listen to a whole clip and just wants to pull out certain phrases, that's super helpful on its own. And if you're adding manual subtitles, having a transcript right there will help speed up your workflow immensely. So let's bring up this transcription window. Just hit this button here on the menu. And what's really, really cool about this is that you can edit the video using the transcript. For instance, as you can see here, if I select a sentence, it selects that part of the video. When I copy and paste that text around, the video also copies and pastes the corresponding clips to the same place as in the transcript. You can also really simply just delete a section by highlighting the sentences you want cut out and just deleting. This is super handy for any professional editors who maybe want to quickly assemble a rough cut of the video using just the transcript. And for anyone who struggles with editing video, this can really simplify things for you. When you're ready to export your sequence, you'll have two options in doing so. The first is to hit this quick export icon in the top right here, which will give you a very basic choice of exporting presets. Or you can head on over to the export panel over here on the left, which lets you go in depth and choose the right settings for your export file. When you get into this export panel, you'll see a large range of options such as media file, YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, Facebook, all of which serve different purposes to help you streamline the exporting process. For now, we're going to create a media file. This just means that the final export will be an MP4 file on your PC, which we can then send or upload wherever we want. It's very easy to get around here, and you can rename your file, change the export location so it's easier to find, and most importantly, choose the format you're going to have the final export render to. I always choose H.264 as my encoder of choice, it's the most widely used codec on the planet, making it incredibly universal, and it can be uploaded to all of the main streaming and content creation sites. There's a lot to look at in the video drop-down menu, but for us, I wouldn't recommend changing any of these settings. The most important setting is down in the depths of these options, and that is the bitrate. Bitrate is fairly simple to understand. The higher the bitrate, the better your video quality and the larger your files are. Personally, I always aim for 20 megabits per second on my renders, as this looks great on YouTube and also keeps the file size very much manageable. As for the audio settings, it's a similar story. The higher the audio bitrate, the better the sound quality. I tend to keep this on 320 kilobits per second, which sounds great. These are the standards that you should be hitting with your YouTube videos and will keep your videos at the same quality as the pros. And hey, let's not forget about Media Encoder. If you click send to media encoder, your sequence will render in another app so that you can carry on editing your project in the meantime. This is great for if you're sending off drafts to clients on tight deadlines and need to continue editing on something else. It's also a part of the Creative Cloud subscription, which most of you will have. And that concludes my editing basics series for Premiere Pro. Hopefully you've learned some new skills and I'll be seeing you on YouTube soon. And if you're after more Fins art, then head to my channel for more Premiere Pro tips and tricks. I look forward to seeing you there.